afternoon. You probably assume that I'll be talking about disability. Well, I will in a way, but kind of indirectly. This is about acceptance and my pursuit of acceptance. My journey for that began in ziplining in Salem, Oregon, and ended in Holland after crossing the North Sea. Now, to me, acceptance always came in bits and pieces, uh, and it usually came in time of crisis. Um, it was not my lack of self-acceptance. Unfortunately, it was my rejection of other people. Rejection was a flaw that kept me, kept me in an emotional prison for many years. But I need to tell you the backstory. The back story is I got polio when I was eight years old in the middle of the epidemic that swept across the United States. And like other children my age who had the disease, um, we went through a series of hospitalizations for surgery and then ended up, ended up trying to walk with uh, clunky steel braces. Except I think I was a little different than some of the other kids. I was homeschooled, very isolated, and totally overprotected. Now what this does, these three conditions combined with uh, polio, gave me a distortion of life. And that distortion is that life was all about me. Um, I was not a nice child. The worst side effect, of course, that my negativity was toward disabled people. Isn't that an irony? I'm embarrassed to admit this to you today, but I'm sorry, it's part of the backstory. My flaw followed me all the way to adult young adult. When I would see disabled people, it would trigger something in me, and I think it was fear that it would trigger. And I got into a lot of wrong thinking. I was afraid that I would end up in bed for the rest of my life. I was afraid that I would be doomed to a wheelchair for the rest of my life. Now to me, a wheelchair in these younger years meant a loss of control and a loss of freedom. And I wanted to gain my freedom back. My first step towards this was going to Salem, Oregon and to do the zip line. Now I had been there before and I knew the terrain and I knew that I could not walk of those steep um, forest trails. So I did my usual uh, trick, which is to hide. That's an avoidance technique. So I would hide in my room, but my colleagues found me, and they carried me all the way up to the launching pad. Soon I was strapped into a harness, if you've ever done this before, you know what I mean, screaming down this cable at 35 miles an hour, absolutely terrified. But it was exhilarating. I was, the best thing is I was included. I was part of the game. And you know what, I loved it. And I figured that if I can zip line, then I can do other, more dangerous things. <laughs> well, a few months later, a dangerous thing did come up. Well, it was a risky adventure. I signed up for a journey on the tall ships in London. This was three-masted, 18-sail ship. We sailed out of London, across the North Sea, and our destination was Holland. Well, my shipmates, can you guess? Of course. They were 10 more, more disabled people than me. Brain injured, blind, stroke, 
cerebral palsy. I had to face my ugly prejudice in the small quarters of the ship, particularly below, below ship. It was really hard to avoid these people. The thing that saved all of us and saved me from avoiding were work duties. And we all had work duties, or ship duties, I guess you would call it. Well, I was assigned to polish the brass, you know, the big uh, bell and all the fittings at the top. Well, I flunked brass. Um, I didn't do it very well, and I hated it. It's bad on the fingernails. So they reassigned me to the galley, and this was perfect because it was a hiding place. And besides, I could talk to the uh, chef. So my job was peeling onions every day for 40 people for dinner. And you know, I really liked it because it was quiet. I was alone. I didn't have to face my fear of these other disabled people that scared me to death. But the job had absolutely no reward. There was no affirmation. And I was certainly not the center of the universe. I admired one person particularly. It was this blind fellow who climbed the rat lines with only a harness on them and one of the uh, helpers right behind him. Now, we all worked at setting the sails, and there were 18 at full sails. When there was a real gust across the North Sea, setting 18 sails was really hard work. And remember, you had all these disabled people trying to do it. So one day when we were uh, practicing setting the sail. I watched a cerebral palsy young man in a wheelchair. He could not use his hands. So his caregiver would put the rope in his hand and the rope would slip through his fingers. My heart opened when I saw this fellow because that was his effort he was doing his part on the sail, on the rope. Now, my heart opened a crack when I saw some of these people much more disabled than I. I could walk at that time. Some of these people could not. And yet, they were a disabled crew who did everything with joy in them. I'm not saying I did it with joy in my heart. They were doing some cleaning to night watch. Now, if you've ever been on a ship, night watch is just about the worst thing. It's the bottom of the list. And I could imagine somebody saying, this really didn't happen, this is imagination. Hartley, you have night watch from midnight to four o'clock in the morning. I didn't say it, but what I wanted to say, you want me to do what? Uh, my attitude needed definitely more work when I found out how I was thinking. Well, eventually we arrived in Holland, and the port village was a beautiful little village called Middleburg. And of course, it was all canals through it with the lovely architecture. The first night, we had shore leave. And the, uh, we had a lot of the volunteers were young college students who were using their vacation to assist on the ship. Well, they were very excited about leading us, trying to find a pub where they, we could sample some of that great Holland beer, Amstead. So um, we all gathered to go downtown, and they said, gee, this is a long walk. You better sit in a wheelchair. Can you imagine what reaction that was getting? It was just my worst nightmare. We were going to do 
go down the streets in public, me in a wheelchair, which is the last thing in the world I wanted to do. So I thought, oh no, they're going to think that I'm one of them. They're going to think that I'm disabled. No way am I going to do that. Now I had a couple of choices. One choice was to stay behind and go back to the ship alone in the dark. Not a good choice. The other choice was to face my fear and my anger. And that anger had been accumulating for a long time. So I didn't know what to do. I figured this is a great time to have a serious conversation with God. Why me, Lord? Why me? And there's a really quiet answer. And it was, why not you? I finally got it. What I had denied all my life. Good grief, I was disabled. I was a member of that courageous club. No drama, no background music, just simple acceptance. Finally, I could quit struggling. Well, that's the backstory. There's a little bit more to it. After London, I returned to Hawaii. I lived in Kailua, Kona. I was not interested in going back to being a popular college teacher. I was done with popular. I resigned my teaching position, and I didn't quite know what to do. But I thought back on what I had experienced on that ship that I had never experienced before. I started a nonprofit organization with the name of which is Acceptable, Accessible Hawaii. This experience on the ship gave my life a purpose and I wanted to pursue that. We've done some very good projects in this community. The last one that was really exciting was we had a reception for the challenged athletes in Ironman. And I'll tell you, I've never seen anything so exciting as an amputee crossing that finish line. Well, you know, TED Talks challenges all of us with a very important question. He says, is this, or is this idea worth spreading? Well, my answer is, ask the wounded warriors in the VA hospitals all over the United States. Or you can ask me. Or we can ask an author I think you know, Camila Gibran. I woke and saw that life is all service. I served and saw that service is joy. Albert Schweitzer agrees with you. The only ones who will be really happy are those who have found how to serve. So yes, Ted, serving is an idea worth cherishing, worth spreading. For those of you who are listening to me right now, are those that will be seeing this perhaps on CDs or tapes, you have an opportunity to partake in the joy, to serve your family or your community. Each one is different. Well, I think my time is up. It's time for me to say goodbye to you. I have a takeaway. A takeaway is an idea where you will always remember me. It's my farewell gift to you. So here's the takeaway. Polio took my legs away, but never 